welcome back. Let's uh, pick it up where we left off. So in the last uh, part of the lecture, we were talking about the assignment operator. And now what we're going to do is talk about expressions and operators. Okay. So we know, for example, that I can print threatened vengeance in quotes. I can assign the variable uh, meaning of life to the number 42, and I can print the meaning of life, and it, of course, will print 42. So we see now two different things that can go inside of this print statement. An actual string and a variable that is a pointer or a reference to a, an int, a long int, a float, or a string. Okay? Now in addition to that, we can, we can actually build more complex expressions like you see here. So let's look at this statement for a second. So we're saying, please print for me 18 plus 24. Now notice there aren't quotes here. Um, I'm not saying print 1, 8, space, plus, space, 2, 4. I'm saying please print for me the result of summing up these two integers, 18 and 24. So, of course, when I do that, it will print the sum of the two. It doesn't print 18, it doesn't print 24, it doesn't print that string, it just prints the sum of it. So it evaluates that sum and prints it out. So let me just define a few things for you. This is called an expression. Okay, it's different than a number, 24. It's different than a string, in quotes. It's different than a variable. It's different than a function call. It's an expression by which I mean something has to be evaluated before I have an answer. Okay, so this is an expression that is a simple summation. For print to be able to print it, it has to evaluate the expression because it has to know what the answer is. Okay? So let me define two other parts because I'll be using these words throughout the semester and I just want to be able to define them for you. So that whole thing is an expression and that is called the operator, the summation operator. And it, these two numbers are called the operands. So the expression is the entire thing. It has an operator and then the operands are what are being operated on by the operator. That was a terrible sentence. Okay, so there are the obvious operators when dealing with numbers, whether they're ints, long ints, or floats. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All the familiar ones. Notice, by the way, multiplication is the asterisk, not x, because x, of course, is a character that we can use as a variable. So it's the star operator. And then there is the modulo operator, which is the percent. So let me just tell you what that is, because this is going to turn into be really handy as the semester goes on. So the modular operator takes operator, takes two operands, 9 and 4, for example, divides them, and hands back the remainder. Okay, so unlike division, which actually does the division, 9 divided by 4 is 2, and then 1 left over, so it returns 1. Not at all obvious why this is useful, but you will see later on in the semester where this modular, modular operator, modulus operator rather, comes in very handy. So just remember that, that um, is gonna, we're going to use that later on. Now, a couple of things about expressions. They, we, can, uh, we can make them more complex. So in this expression up here on the top, for example, I have two operands. And we, of course, have to decide on what order we do things in. So the standard order that you learned in arithmetic works here. Multiplication and division first, well, left to right, of course, and then multiplication and division take priority over addition and subtraction. So here, what we would do is multiply 3 and 6, and then add the result to 24 to get 42. By the way, I don't think you should ever write expressions like this. You should never rely on the fact that there is an order of operations, even if this is what you want. I think you should, should put parentheses around it, if for no other reason to tell yourself that that's what you are doing. So I think this is dangerous code to write, but it will, of course, work. Now, obviously, if I want the plus sign to be um, priority, I will put parentheses around that expression. So now I will sum 24 and 3. That operand, uh, the operator works on that operands. That will give me 27, and then I will multiply that by 6 to get 162. And notice, when I go to print each of these things, that entire expression has to be evaluated. So in order to get an answer to print 42, 162, et cetera, I need to evaluate the entire expression, however many operators there are in there. Okay? So here, for example, in this one, you can see that, uh, of course, division and multiplication have equal priority, but we now go from left to right. 100 divided by 5 is 20 times 2 is 40. Again, I don't think that you should 
uh, ever write expressions like this because I think you should put explicitly put parentheses. Now I notice something interesting here. There's actually a decimal place here. These are all integers. So why do I have a floating point number here? Same thing here. 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. And the reason is that in Python, the division operator is defined only over floating point numbers because the expectation is when you're dividing things, you need fractions. And so even though you put integers in here, you got to float out. And that's sort of interesting. And, and in most cases, it won't be a problem, but every once in a while it will. So be careful with this untyped language. Untyped languages are nice because there's no fuss. You don't have to worry about anything. But then behind the scenes, Python is doing some work for you in terms of recasting things when you use operators, division, for example, that require floating point precision. Good. So uh, same thing here. Notice that uh, 30, 3 times 10 divided by 4 is not an integer, and so it hands you back a floating point number, even though all of these were simply integers. Now, there's a way of converting this back into an integer, or there's a way of converting these into float, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but be aware that there can be the switch that happens between your types, okay? And that happens regardless of whether these are floating point numbers with a zero in them or not. So from Python's perspective, these are floating point numbers because you put a decimal there, even though there's a zero here. And then of course, you'll still get um, a 7.5 here. So simply by putting a decimal point there, you are forcing them to be treated as floating points. In this case, it doesn't matter because Python's doing the right thing for you. I think, however, in the same way that you should put parentheses in order to group things, you should be very careful to make sure you understand that that's a floating point operator. And really, you should put decimal points in there to remind yourself that you are, in fact, doing floating point operations. Okay. So just a very quick little bit on expressions. Expressions are simply things that have to be evaluated. Right now, we've only looked at very simple expressions, which are addition, multiplication, division, uh, uh, sorry, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and of course the modulus operator, which will come down the line for us a little bit. Uh, expressions have to be evaluated left to right with priority given to multiplication and division over addition and subtraction. Again, make sure that you put parentheses around your expressions to get the ordering right. All right, so this is a good time to take a little break and let's do a drill. So here's the drill. Please write some code that draws something that looks like this, this bullseye. And I'm going to ask you to do this in the following way, although you can do it any way you want. Draw an inner circle that's red, superimposed on top of a yellow circle, which is superimposed on top of a blue circle. So remember that the order matters. So I can see a red circle on top of a yellow circle on top of a blue circle. So the inner part of that blue and the yellow circle is not visible And I, since the red was drawn last. So Again, remember from that one of the first lectures I said, think, 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 sketch, 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 write one line of code, test it, make sure it works. So in this case, what I would do is draw a blue circle, define a canvas, and draw a blue circle, run it, make sure it works, and then draw the yellow one, make sure it works, and then draw the red one and make sure it works. And the only other little catch is I'm going to ask you to define a single variable S that scales the size of the bullseye. So you can pick whatever canvas, if you want, 200 by 200 canvas is fine, the way we've been doing it. Make them as big or small as you want. But I should be able to, by changing a single variable, S, change the scale of that bullseye. And of course, those bullseyes are going to be dictated by the radius of the circle. So please go ahead and pause the video. Uh, do this drill. Um, I think it should take you 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to show you my solution in a few minutes. Okay, welcome back. Here is my solution. Uh, so, of course, I'm going to import from draw SVG as draw, so I can now use all the drawing commands. I'm going to define the canvas, D equals drawing, 200 by 200, origin at the center. I'm going to eventually uh, uh, print out the entire canvas with the little D right there. Here is my variable S, which is being assigned the floating point value 0 0.5, so a scale factor. One obviously means don't scale. The smaller that number, the smaller the bullseye. The bigger the number, the bigger the bullseye. And then my bullseye, of course, is made up of three circles. So D, which of course is my canvas, dot append. Please splat onto the canvas a circle, a circle, a circle. The first one is blue. The second one is yellow. The third one is red. So blue on the bottom, yellow on top, red uh, on top of that. 
and then notice that the radius goes from 100, that's the big one, to 75, to 50, and, and they're, of course, each centered at the origin, 0, 0. I could have put them anywhere I wanted. And then all I had to do was scale the radius by s. So when s is 0.5, all the radii get uh, scaled by 0.5. When S is 4, the bullseye gets bigger. So assignment operator, and then we use that variable to scale our bullseye. Okay, good. If you didn't get the drill, don't worry about it. Look at the solution, put it aside, wait a half hour, and go back and do it again. Um, so part of the drills is just about practice. So don't worry if you didn't get it, but keep working at it. All right, that's it for this uh, short lecture, and we'll pick it up in, uh, in, on the next one.